let me give some disclaimers here. Everyone here knows, right? But this is this this part's mainly for YouTube. CRT is a good thing. White privilege is real. What else? Uh, intersectionality is is uh, something that needs to be understood more. So I get it, all right? But I'm also not a fan of this type of activism that I see amongst black and brown people that really revolves around, it, it, it reminds me of like the tanky version of race relations, where how tanky's entire ideology revolves around, modern tankies, in the, in the colloquial word tankies, revolves around just being anti-American, right? You have tankies that are, that are defending Iran. You have tankies that are defending Russia. And why? Because it's the opposite of, of, the, of America. Activists amongst black and brown communities often get into the same sort of pitfall where it just seems that the main motivation for your activism is to be anti-white. It's like, I hate white people. That's the core. You start there and then you expand out. Now, being very critical of white people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like. Like even the white people here in the chat are very critical of white people. Like everybody, like everybody knows that. Telling people about white privilege and and letting people know this stuff, yes, of course, of course. But stuff like this kind of uh, stuff like this kind of grinds my gears. So it's gonna start off, it's gonna start off okay, and then it's going to fall apart in very one uh, in a very specific area. Let me break this down for you and y'all can go break it down for others. Rest in power is not the woke version of rest in peace. It's not just cool. It's not a way to show uh, you really like someone. It's not something you say when a very famous person you really like dies. Please, for the love of God, stop appropriating things with meaning and watering them down to the point of uselessness. I've, I've seen people say rest in power for Angela Lansbury and I can't believe I'm typing this Queen Elizabeth II. So far, so good, based. Even if it is a little bit, I feel, uh, woke scoldy. Like, we're, we're on that line where it's like, anytime someone does a tweet, like, don't, don't tell me happy insert holiday here. Actually super sad. Stop me. And I'm just kind of like, calm the fuck down. Calm down. Even if it's just, I don't know, maybe I'm, too, maybe, maybe I'm reverse tone policing. I don't know. People were saying rest in power about a fucking colonizer based, right? Like that's a good critique. And like, you all want me to, uh, it's like, you all want me to have a stroke just scrolling through Twitter. So what does rest in power mean? So a lot of this, by the way, again, is good. So if, in case anybody doesn't know, let's figure it out. A variation of rest in peace, rest in power is used, especially in black and LGBTQ communities note especially not only to commemorate a person whose death is considered unjust or wrongful in this way rest in power is a call to continue the struggle for social justice and and as a show of solidarity let me highlight the crucial bit to commemorate to commemorate a person whose death is considered unjust or wrongful please read this several times until it sinks in go ahead go on i'll wait i'm sorry but you're all white ladies so she goes on and on right uh, but notice here not your old white ladies with fame and wealth and systemic power do not count for this. Your white activist and scholar who died at 79 from cancer does not count for this. Hmm. So where, where is it? Is it 79? Is it white? So now as I'm reading through, I'm kind of like some alarms are going off, but they're silent. They're like quiet, right? Sometimes you can disagree with somebody on some kind of like queep you know, bullshit that's kind of like, eh, I mean, I wouldn't have said exactly like that, but, but I agree. And that's how I would be had I stopped here. So she, so she continues on. She likes to emphasize, especially a person of color, which I get, but I think she's not understanding what the word especially means in this context. It just means generally, especially, right? But not only. It is, it is sometimes used to know the death of a person felt to have died too soon or senselessly or a person was influential. Here we go. This is the key right here. This is the part where we're going to talk about Chadwick Boseman. I agree with this, but then we're gonna go somewhere else with it. Chadwick Boseman got rest in power even though he was rich, famous, and died of cancer. Yes, 
He died too soon and had become a symbol to black Americans of strength and dignity and a land where we were not subjugated, not enslaved, right? Talking about Wakanda, talking about Black Panther. Agree, right? I mean, just as an icon and, and the way that he presented the character and the way that, you know, uh, and the way that he also lived his real life and the, and, the, and the charities that he was involved in, right? So I get it. I get it. Here we go. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. Would it be appropriate to say rest in power to Leslie Jordan? He was a gay icon and sadly passed away on Monday at the age of 65. After he had crashed his car into the side of a building. After having issues that were not fully disclosed to the public. Because I said it and I don't know. Now, let me, let me, let me say something real quick. I understand that to a lot of these people, my skin is not dark enough. But, as a melanated person, let me just say that just because you're melanated doesn't mean you have all the answers. And the example I give all the time is, is how easy it is to find brown people, Hispanic people, who hate Latinx, right? Like that, that term in general. Where I'm like, well, they are not the arbiters of that. I am a Hispanic person. And I acknowledge that a lot of Hispanics hate Latinx because a lot of Hispanics are transphobic. And even liberal Hispanics that are Democrat and hate Trump are still transphobic and hate the idea of inclusive language. So, no, just because you're brown doesn't mean you have the answers. I'm okay with people, like, taking somebody, you're, it's not your experience, so let me, let, me, let me ask you what your opinion is. But also, there's, there's some logic to this. If we go to the original tweet, we already say, we already know that, um, here we go. A variation of, on rest in peace, rest in power is used, especially in black and LGBTQ communities. Let's break this down. Let's, 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 let's do a little common sense here. Black and LGBTQ communities. So there are black people in the LGBTQ community so if it was only black people, you wouldn't even have to add the LGBT community part. So wherever she's quoting this from, I assume Wikipedia or something, like she doesn't source it, but it's a quote, so some book or Wikipedia or something. And I'm fine with just accepting it out in its face value. I'm not gonna go pull up some sociology book on race relations and, 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 and then say, well, actually, no, fine. This definition is it. If you're separating black and LGBTQ communities, what follows is that we're talking about everyone in the LGBT community because rest in power is for marginalized communities. What does she say here, right? So spoiler alert, no. Leslie Jordan was a comedian and an actor in the 70s and 80s where it was extremely dangerous to come out. Like, unless you were in New York City, and sometimes not, and a lot of times not even then, it just, relative to Oklahoma, right, New York City and LA and Hollywood would be safer, but even then, it was dangerous to, to be out as a, as a gay man, um, as a gay person, and Leslie Jones did that, and he was openly and, and, and proud about his homosexuality, during a time where that was not common. And that opened the door and, and, and paved the way to, at, at, least, at least was a part of that help, to open that up and become more accepting of, of, uh, uh, of the gay community, of the uh, LGBT community. He is a gay icon. No, he was an icon, but his death was tragic, uh, had nothing to do with the fight for justice. Chadwick Boseman's cancer had nothing to do with the fight for justice. Think of it as a Venn diagram, the intersection of both civil rights and marginalized identity. Now, here we go. Leslie Jordan is to many gay men what Chad Chadwick Boseman is to many African Americans, both icons that represented something bigger than themselves to a marginalized community and tragically too soon. Is it because he's white? Uh, let's see here. And then... Some people agree. Absolutely. He made it a point to lift up his community. No, a better sentiment may be 
may his memory be a, a blessing. So that's a Jewish saying, right? I don't know why that would be better. Uh, I want some of what you're smoking, mate. Please ask yourself why are you arguing the definition of something you just heard, you just discovered. Does it feel like your place? This is what I'm talking about. This is identity politics. Is it your place? What? Uh, and then this is just me kind of going back and forth. Uh, what makes you think I just said because you don't know how to use it? It's been explained why it's not appropriate. Yeah, okay. I'll probably uh, be bored. And you really don't understand this at all. Did you, you know, did you just read the damn thread? The thread includes the LGBT community. The thread includes the LGBT community. Chadwick Boseman died as an actor. Although we know that he was active in his community, he's not known for activism, right? Chadwick Boseman didn't stand in, at, at the UN uh, or in Congress to, to talk about you know the the plight of of of, of black men uh, black people in the united states like like he, he wasn't an activist he was an actor but i'm fine that is i think it's i think it's awesome to use rest in power because he is an icon and the character he represented i i'm it's fine right but he was a rich and famous and so sometimes what i like to do is is kind of back people into uh a a corner where i'm not really so much arguing but i'm asking them questions in order to get them to say the thing that they don't want to say out loud he was a rich and famous white male who was comfortably privileged even if he was gay because blackness is always seen as worse than gayness first of all uh arguable first of all arguable okay because let me tell you something republicans white supremacists deep south white supremacists are more ready to support a dumb f like Herschel Walker than anybody who was homosexual. Like, let a, a homosexual man try to run for office as a Republican. So, arguable. Arguable. Is representation a form of activism? Uh, yeah. I, sure. I'm fine. I, I'm, 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 I'm okay with, with Chadwick Boseman being an icon and, and being a symbol. And I think that Black Panther was was powerful enough for that, um, but it wasn't just that. We know he was active in 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 his community, um, and was a good person. Like, f yes, rest in power. My main thing is, why did you say no to Leslie Jones, to, uh, Jordan, Angela Lansbury? Yeah, Queen Elizabeth? F no. Yeah, with you. You know, he was rich and famous white male who was comfortably privileged even if he was gay because blackness is always seen as worse than gayness he didn't deserve the phrase arguable so but then i continue to press okay so then the phrase is only for black people you disagree with op when she brings up the lgbtqia no just say yes just say yes i'm saying that no matter what he was a privileged white male whose struggle with gayness is overpowered by his whiteness but fine, for the sake of argument, I give her that, right? But regarding rest in power, its use with marginalized communities and its use with marginalized communities, Bozeman and Jordan were both wealthy, famous cis men. I mean, Chadwick Bozeman is also straight, who are icons to a marginalized people and die too soon. If anyone says rest in power can't apply to Jordan, it's only because he's white. So... Maybe only non-white LGBTQIA, right? Like indigenous people. Like, are you saying that it's only black and non-white LGBTQ uh, plus people? No, not only non-white LGBT, but if he's rich, if, you see what I'm saying? So there's this like, we're going to keep moving the goalposts over and over. And this whole segment was just me saying, if your activism just revolves around being anti-white, uh, you're gonna fail. You are you are literally doing harm. Um, that is not to say that white people need to be uh, um, uh, handled with kitten gloves. That they shouldn't be called out for sure. But this right here is ridiculous. 
right? This is absolutely ridiculous. Um, you you see it you you see it with the attacks on Keffels, where there is a portion of and we'll call it Twitter activism. We can call it whatever, but there is a portion of Twitter that literally just revolved their activism around being anti-white to where are you trans are you are you potentially murdered for being a trans person does coming out as trans to your date mean that every time you do that you're rolling you're rolling the dice that 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 person is going to kill you are there still areas in the united states where the trans panic defense can still let you, allow you to get away with murder yeah but you're white like shut the f up. Like shut up. Like what a fucking disservice you do to real, real activism when you're willing to shit on uh, gay and trans people or or try to gatekeep a word like rest in power by contradicting yourself by saying especially black and LGBT plus people, but then say not Leslie Jones. Don't revolve your, your activism around just hating white people. You're allowed to hate white people. And a lot of people hate white people for good reason, okay? <laughs> I'm not saying don't hate white people. I'm just saying understand that it's kind of uh, it's kind of nonsensical and doesn't really hurt, help anything. So it's, it's, it shouldn't be the center of your activism. <laughs>